Hello everyone, my name is Cristian Negulescu and today we'll talk about queues. You know me for a lot of integration with Salesforce service now, Shira, Confluence and other connectors, yeah? On the last period we did videos with triggers, how to start soft, how to start different software from, um, uh, from the OUA path orchestrator, yeah? So you have here a trigger video with triggers where you find all the triggers. Now, inside of the UA path orchestrator, you have the option to trigger a process from a queue, yeah? So you go here on the automations, on the triggers, and you can select here that you want to start a process when an, a data arrives to a queue. I show this on, on, on two, three videos, but I want to show you how to add data from the queue from Postman to understand exactly the steps. As usual, I will use the, um, uh, the cloud API, the cloud uh, UiPath cloud, and uh, I will do this stuff. So to be able to, uh, to work with UiPath cloud, first I will send a post message to the account uiPath.com out token, yeah? And I will give my, uh, as a body, you, you have to give the grant type, which is refresh token, my client ID, and my refresh token, yeah? On the headers, you need the contact, uh, contact time application uh, and you have uh, XUiPath tenant, fantastic. In my case, you put your tenant, yeah? After I run this one, I will receive an access token. So I will copy this access token as my authorization. And then I want to add <clears throat> the data on the queue. So I will go here to authorize. I will select auto authentication. And I will put the data here. Good. Now, to be able to put the data on the queue, you go here and say platform UAP.com. This is my tenant tenant or auto authentication. And I say add data to queue item. For full description of this data, how to add, remember you have Postman UiPath rocks, yeah? On Postman UiPath rocks, you have all the details and you have here how to create queue item and you find all the details and so on. So very nice website. Okay, let's come back to our Postman. And let's see, on the headers, I have expert and I have my uh, tenant fantastic. I have content and I have here, uh, I have body, yeah? And on the body, I will have like this. I will have item data, I have the name of the queue, and I have GQ set on my uh, on my um, orchestrator. I will say that priority is normal, and I will put specific content. And specific content in my case will be type and will be first name, okay? And let's put subject YouTube, YouTube, and uh, from um, postman, postman, okay? Good. Now, you will see that when I will add this data, so I will not hit send, and I will show you why. Because on the beginning, we talk about queues. Let's see my queue that it's empty now. GQ, yeah? You see GQ reminds zero, but this queue is connected to a trigger. So if I go to automation, you will see here that I will uh, um, uh, I will have this trigger, which is Christian Gmail uh, trigger. Let me edit. So I will have a date uh, a trigger based on the queue. So, so when something is arriving on a queue item, on GQ item, uh, the system will start the process on each one element that arrives to the queue, yeah? So the process will be extract data from the queue. Let me add the data on the queue, and then let's see the, the, the process. So I will send it. I receive the, um, the confirmation. We will go to automation. We will go to jobs. And you will see that a few seconds ago, the process was triggered, my process was triggered, and I can show you the result. I have 
one element on the queue and the data was that it, it was uh, the data was typed to a subject youtube and first name postman okay let me show you the process to understand so the process that i have on the orchestrator is like this first i have a get queue items where i say that i want the data from gq and i get a list with list of queue items and then i will print here as you see on the log the numbers of new items in the queue yeah and i send the count if I want to go inside, I will do a for each and display all the item like this. I will say this will be an item. Uh, this will be an, um, uh, a queue item. And I will say specific contact and I want type and first name. That's the item that I put there. And this is comment. To be able to get all the items and change the transaction to be from new to be processed, I will do this. I will do a do, uh, do while. I will say that this will continue until the uh, so in the time that I have a valid queue item, this will, will uh, stay on a loop. If I don't have a, a valid queue item, this will exit the loop. Yeah. So if I will say get transaction item, I will say that is from GQ. I will this will receive an item queue element, and I will say if item queue element is nothing. I will do nothing because I will go further and exit. If it's valid, I will write a an, an log with type and I will extract the type. And with subject, and I will extract the first name. Yeah. So the uh, type and the first name. Yeah. So I will display the values. And then on the end here, I will change the um, um, transaction item to be successful. OK. So this is the process good and you see that this was running i have a uh, robot on the um, on an unattended robot and uh, this this is working there let's go and modify the trigger so i go here on the trigger and i will say that look this trigger will start this process when the minimum number of new items on the queue will be three. Yeah. So if I will receive new uh, three new items, then the process will, will start. Yeah. So I will go back here and I will say YouTube one send. Then I will say YouTube two and Postman two send. I will go back to the queue and you will see on the queue here on the queue we'll say gq you see that i have two items remaining yeah and the process is not started so if i go to the jobs i see only the process that is four minutes ago if i go in put also the third item done you will see that the orchestrator will receive the data and you can see that it's already start the process and if we take a look on the process we will see here what we have on the process so i have multiple pages let's refresh again and see what we have so first, it was extract data from the queue. How many in I, number of the new data on the item? It's three yeah, on the queue. Next, I have first YouTube one, first Postman one. Then I have YouTube two, Postman two, YouTube three, Postman three, and so on. Yeah. So that's it's a very important feature because think about that uh, what we discuss on the. Uh, on the last video, so on how to trigger Outlook, how to trigger process from Outlook or Gmail, yeah, using the queues. And think about that um, here you can set uh, uh, different triggers. You can set one trigger on the orchestrator to say, look, if I get five emails, start the process, yeah. Or you can you can also put in parallel another trigger that um, will uh, will check your email from uh, uh, hour to hour, yeah. So in this way, you can make a balance between 
okay, I want to respond to emails when I arrive to a um, uh, dedicated volume, or I want to respond it from time to time. Yeah, or you can um, put uh, both items and both triggers and work together with um, these uh, both triggers. Yeah. So that's the idea. How to send message? Uh, how to uh, put data on the queue? using the postman and how to use these triggers inside of the orchestrator. In the future, I will try to do this also from Salesforce service now and so on with data from the queue to see this data. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ask me here on Marketplace or on LinkedIn what else you want to see on my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Have a good one. Bye bye.